everybody, Lord Tremendous here. Got another battle report here for you. Sorry it's been so long since my last battle report, but I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, I forgot my camera one weekend, and then the following weekend we played nothing but team games, just dorking around. But finally got a, remembered my camera and got a 1v1 game, so. <laughs> and it just so happens to be the Lone Wolf GT prep battle, one of the first ones I've had, so you're not really missing anything, it's been more of the same. But this is a 2300 point battle, because that's what the Lone Wolf GT is going to be, and it is I, Lord Tremendous of the Ogres, versus Big Daddy of the Elf Armies. This is not the army that he's actually bringing to the Lone Wolf, as far as I understand, but he doesn't want to show what he's bringing. He wants it to be a surprise for his opponents, because he's tricksy like that. And hey, I get to beat the crap out of elves, so that always makes me feel good. This is an excellent game. Uh, it's a very unique list that my opponent brought, so sit back, relax, and get ready to see how it goes. Here's my list, and it has changed significantly since my last battle report. I have a Warlock uh, with Mind Fog and the Inspiring Talisman. I want to try Mind Fog, and anytime I can get more Inspiring on the table is good. I have an Army Standard with the Healing Charm, and then I have a Naked Army Standard, and then I've got two Red Goblin Bigots with on Flea Bags. Uh, obviously, the Army Standards are for Inspiring, and the Healing Charm is just so that one of them can, you know, shave off a wound or two every every once in a while but the two red goblin bigots were actually suggestions from you my wonderful viewers and uh, i really do appreciate it because they're my answer to get around to sides and dog war machines and single characters things of that nature so you'll see how they go but i gotta be honest with you i really like them Here's the core of my list, the big bulk that, you know, makes it an actual army. I took a giant, and honestly, I just like having monsters on the table, and the giant is cheap and pretty effective if used properly. I have a unit of chariots, but just a regiment of them, and I gave him the crystal pendant of retribution because I figured my opponents would get excited about charging it and hopefully double, maybe even triple charge it because I'm going to send them way out there. And when they defeat them, they all take 2d6 hits, which is huge. Then I have a backup chariots regiment that's butt naked, and their job is to just be like a DPS machine, really. I have a Red Goblin Scouts Troop for Chaff, and I've got a Shooter's Horde with the Blessing of the Gods, because I really like that unit. And making them elite is just, you know, cheating. The rest of my army is more the same. I've got a Siege Breaker Horde. I gave him the Brew of Haste, because I had, you know, 15 points left over at the end. I have another Siege Breaker Horde that's butt naked. And then I've got a Warrior Horde, and I didn't give him anything, but I gave him two-handed weapons. Because honestly, I've given up on defense. Defense 5 on paper looks good, but who cares? So the two Warrior Hordes I took, now I have two-handed weapons to give them extra oomph when they get into combat. Because honestly, almost everything wounds on 2s or 3s, re-rolling 1s. I mean, it, defense, unless it's defense 6, in my opinion, and I'm not good at this game, is mostly useless. Uh, anyway, that's going to do it for my list. I'm going to post my opponent's list, play some music, feel free to pause it whenever you like, see what he took. Here's deployment. So, as you see, my opponent brought three dragons, a flying unit, three units of cav, and a bolt thrower. And there's some dumbass mage running around as well. <laughs> I have very few answers to that. So, I, I went out and thought, you know what? Screw it. Let's see how this goes. So, I have a unit of, uh, I have my red goblin scouts on the left flank there. Their job is to run out, and I'm trying to pull stuff to the left. I, I don't know if it's going to work. I don't care if it works, but if he ignores my chaff, because I've, I've got the Red Goblin Scouts and one of my uh, bigots on a flea bag over there, then I'm going to spin around and try to get a hold of his 
bolt thrower, which is on the hill, and take it out before it can do any damage, and with a little luck, even his caster. That would be awesome. I've got my warriors and a unit of chariots in the middle there, and the unit of chariots in the middle have the retribution crystal. I'm going to throw him out in the middle, and I'm going to let the warriors and the siege breakers in the center there counter charge and destroy whatever hits them, finishing them off, basically. I do have my warlock in the middle with mind fog, just in case uh, I can't charge or whatever. Maybe with the damage that I've done with the crystal uh, of retribution. I can, I can force the nerve check into shooting phase and cause them to run off. We'll see. There is an army standing on the left side just in case. And then uh, I got my flea, other uh, goblin bigot on a flea bag in the center. The giant's next to him. I want to send him forward to deal with a dragon because it's going to happen. And then I've got my other unit of chariots, my other unit of siege breakers, my shooters on the hill, another unit of warriors on the right side there. I'm sorry. Both units of siege breakers are on the right. Both units of uh, warriors are on the center and the left. Sorry. I, I get them confused still, too. I'm working on that. I need, like, title cards or something. <laughs> uh, the unit on the right is the uh, on the far right flank there. That's the unit with the uh, Chant of Haste. Uh, that's really it for deployment. That was my plan. You'll see how it goes. Here's top one after movement, and believe it or not, I won the roll to go first, but I decided to let him go first because me moving forward would have put me out of position, to be honest with you. There was no reason to do it. He has to get closer. He doesn't really have anything uh, ranged, you know, no real spells and one bolt throw. I'm not overly worried about that. So I let him go first, and he did. Uh, I think it threw him off a little bit. And he sends his dragons over to the right side there. One lands inside the forest. The others just kind of stay behind the forest. I think one of his units of uh, Cav kind of come up and just kind of nudge into the forest a little bit, or just kind of right outside of it. The other unit kind of runs over to the right flank of it. Uh, on the left side there, his other unit of Cav moves up conservatively, and his little flyers, the Dracon Riders, I think they are, they come up, because he's got range on me. He knows he's got range on me, so I need him to charge things, which is why I'm thrilled I have the Crystal Retribution on a unit of Chariots. That is going to be bait. He's not going to try to dodge. Uh, other than that, though, that's it for his movement. In this pansy phase, the bolt thrower fires at my giant and does three wounds to him, which isn't enough to so much as even phase him. There is no combat, nothing else happens during his turn, so... I present to you bottom of one after movement. And there's a little bit. There's a little bit. Um, on the left flank there, my scouts and my bigot just go flying forward. And uh, they are just they were able to get past him. So now I'm going to try to put some pressure on his bolt thrower. And I'm going to try to make him move out of out of phase, out of sync. You know what I mean? I'm going to try to jumble him up a little bit. Otherwise, yeah, then I get to take out a character, po or a bolt thrower, possibly a character, and maybe even get a rear charge if I'm lucky. Uh, with even more luck, he'll turn his cav to look at me or, or something. It would be very interesting. I move my chariots up eight inches because they're in the forest. They can't march uh, so that they get charged. I'm hoping to pull the Dracon Riders and his chariot, or I'm sorry, and his cav to slam into my chariots. I back the warriors up a little bit, uh, three inches or so uh, from the forest, because I don't want his cav to be in uh, in range, because I know his dracon riders could charge my warriors, and if they do, that's fine. They can tolerate that, and unless they have Pathfinder, they're going to be hindered, so whatever, bring it on. Uh, in the center, I leave my warriors right where they're at. I forget to move my warlock. I'm stupid. I forget to move my warlock. Not that it would have been a huge big deal. Maybe I would have fired a lightning bolt and done a damage. I usually don't do well with lightning bolt. But yeah, I'm an idiot and completely forget to move it. My chariot's on the right flank. The giant stays where he's at. Uh, I do send a flea bag up in the center to try to pull a charge. That would be wonderful. My chariot's on the hill back up a little bit. My army standard on the right side there. He moves the hell out of the way and he has to face back because he's not nimble. And I couldn't move him any more than that. Uh, and then on the further right side, everything backs up except for the shooters. His dragons have fly, uh, <clears throat> can have fly 10, so 20 inch charge, that's really dangerous. I don't want his dragons double charging me just yet. I want to try to put some wounds on him and stuff like that. Maybe even waver one, that would be wonderful. But anyway, that's it for my movement. In the shooting phase, my shooters open up on the dragon that's in the forest. He's got cover, and he's got the fog, so he's stealthy. So I need sevens to hit him, which means I get nine shots. I'm able to put one wound through on him. Believe it or not, uh, he doesn't route. It really shook me, too.
So nothing else happens in my turn, and that brings us to top of two after movement. Uh, yeah, there's going to be some stuff happening here. So he kind of takes my bait on the left side there, and he sends his cav into the flank of my chariots, which is perfectly fine. I want him to beat the chariots. I want him to blow up. His Dracon Riders are in range, and they charge into my warriors in the forest, which they also have Pathfinder. They have the Caterpillar stuff, so I'm not getting any bonuses there. I don't think. I think he's got the Caterpillar. Uh, anyway, I think he's not hindered is the, is the thing. I think they have Pathfinder or Strider or something like that. Uh, on the right side there, as you can see, the little ploy, in my opinion, maybe it was his plan all along, but my ploy works. And his two of his dragons pull over to the left towards the center to try to defend his bolt thrower and his mage, which is great because now he's splitting up his forces and he's all jumbled up back there, as you can see. Uh, even one of his cav units kind of move over and show the flank in the center there. It was really beautiful. So I'm actually very okay with this. Uh, the rest of his stuff, one of his other units of Cav that were outside the forest this time just kind of changed facing a little bit, and his uh, unpainted dragon in the back right there just kind of backs up a little bit looking forward. That's really it for his movement though, and I'm pleased. I am pleased. In the pansy phase, his bolt thrower takes another shot at the giant and puts two more wounds through on him, which sucks. He's, he's starting a little bit more hurt, but I do have my guy with the healing charm right behind him, and had I moved him better last turn, maybe I could have done something about that, but that's on me. And then we go into combat. Quick, fast, in a hurry. Uh, he attacks, he starts off with his Dracon Riders into my warriors, and he rolls insane! And is able to do eight wounds to these guys, which makes me really nervous because <laughs> they were only a 15, 17, eight wounds! That's really easy to at least waver them, and that would suck. I did not think he was going to do that many wounds. It actually works out beautifully though, he rolls a 10 the first time, you can kind of see the edge of one of my army standards on the right there, that within 6 inches of unity, re-rolls re -rolls it and snake eyes it. So my warriors are perfectly fine, and next turn they're gonna beat the crap out of some flying elves, which just makes me all warm and happy inside. This combat over here, this is bad. I believe his cav are are not hindered, or, or they are hindered, but it doesn't matter. With double his attacks, I think he does, uh, what is that, 17 wounds total. So he rolls twice, he does not roll snake eyes. And the unit explodes. The Crystal Pendant actually does like eight or nine hits to him, but only six go through because I have a penchant for rolling ones. And that was sexy though, because now that unit was all like, yay, look at us, and he wanted to go forward, but he couldn't. He could not go forward, so yeah, yeah. I'm really enjoying the Crystal Pendant, even if it does cost me a unit of cha uh, chariots. He backs them up an inch or two. I can't remember what he rolled on a die. I think it was two inches, not even. And uh, that's where they end up, which puts them in beautiful charge range of my warriors, who've been waiting for this moment. We go to bottom of two after movement, and it's all about revenge. On the left flank there, my warriors charge back in, counter charge the uh, Dracon Riders. My other unit of warriors charge the cavalry. My warlock moves up to take a pot shot at the green dragon. The giant moves up because he also wants to take a shot at the green dragon, and I'm kind of tired of him getting shot. Uh, my chariots and my siege breakers move up in the center there. My other unit of siege breakers move back up to start putting some pressure back on them. Shooter stay still, and as you can see, I completely forgot about my army standard with the healing charm. Totally forgot that I had him down there. What Didn't even see him until I get to the combat phase. Total moron, but that's why he's still looking at the back end of my damn deployment zone. <laughs> Ah, uh, the flea bag and my red goblin scouts, however, they move within 20 inches of the uh, bolt thrower. However, they stay outside of 20 inches of the green dragon. So he's either got to move his dragons towards me or uh, back them up. Either way, that's fine. Goblins are keeping dragons at bay, and that's beautiful. In the pansy phase, my warlock fires a lightning bolt at the green dragon and is only able to do one wound. But, you know, for me and lightning bolt, that's actually really good. My shooters take careful aim at the black dragon, I think? Maybe the cav, I can't remember. I think it was the cav, now that I mention it. Uh, but they shoot at the cav, and they're only able to do one wound as well. They had cover, and I'm just not rolling out of the box for the shooters like I have before. But I still like the unit. I understand its purpose. 
we go into combat, and I don't know what happened. I don't know what kind of wild hair got up in these uh, warriors, but apparently giving them two-handed weapons was the way to go. Because out of, what, 18 attacks, 14 wound. 14 wound the Dracon Riders. Oh, baby. Oh, 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 baby. And, yeah, yeah, that was their first attack. It, oh, so happy. I was ecstatic, so I forgot to take a picture of it, and uh, I actually, that unit routes, and I move my warriors up, and they can only come up with an inch of the chair of the cavalry, which you'll see in a minute. Uh, but yeah, yeah, the Dracon Riders are just mashed to bits. Couldn't be happier with my warriors. You can kind of see it right there. They're an inch away from the cav in this picture. But anyway, we go into combat here, and my warriors, again, same equipment, everything, only these guys were hindered. It wasn't a counter charge. They slam into these guys, and only five wounds were able to go through. However, they took six wounds from the Crystal of Retribution, which means they have 11 total, and they die the coward's death that they deserve. I change facing, and look, I know what you're saying. Oh, no, they routed. No. No, we don't allow elves to rout in my army. Elves die. I want to make that very clear. So anyway, those elves die and water the grass, which is a forest. And then I change facing with these guys to look up at the green dragon. Because it occurs to me he could possibly charge me again. If he's going to, I want him in my front. Uh, that was amazing. Left flank secure. With all the elves that I could get a hold of dead, here's top of three after movement, and it's uh, it's a little it's a little funky here. His unpainted dragon was barely able to draw a line of sight to my red goblin bigot that I thought was hiding behind the house. He was able to make it. He was in range. I didn't see it. My opponent did, and he made the charge into the bigot. That's really really bad because while it's a gamble, he could take out my bigot and my giant because my giant's flank is wide open, and if he can roll a five or a six on the overrun, I am screwed. That sucks. That really sucks. But I cannot fault my opponent for seeing that. That was beautiful. I mean, very well played by my opponent. I didn't see it at all. In fact, if it wasn't for his laser pointer, I would have said that it was an impossible charge because he couldn't see him. I was dead wrong. Uh, in the middle, his black and green dragon do a little traffic jam thing there. They're, they kind of back off a little, which sucks because his green dragon, while he's carrying a wound, my giant could see it, you know? <laughs> so my giant could have charged it, which would have been awesome, but you'll see. Uh, other than that, his calf just kind of do another little, uh, traffic jam situation over there. My chariots have a charge at them, and screw it, I'm going to go for it, because that's their job. And uh, that's that's really it for his movement. He kicks off his pansy phase with the tried and true tradition of shooting his bolt thrower at my giant, doing two more wounds, which, you know, I mean, it's tradition, like I said, so I kind of respect it. The giant passes his nerve check no problem, and then we go into combat. Uh, I believe maybe his caster healed the wound off the green dragon, but that was it. Anyway, we lead off, my opponent leads off with his unpainted dragons uh, doing eight wounds to my poor bigot. My poor, poor bigot. Uh, needless to say, he's only got a 9-11 nerve test, so it's pretty bleak here. He's just a goblin. He was just curious. It wasn't meant to be, and the poor guy routes and runs home with his tails between his legs. It, oh, that was an excellent charge by my opponent. The bigot is an individual, and his gamble pays off. He rolls a six and slams into the flank of my giant. We resolve it right away, and uh, he's able to put nine wounds on him. Which, considering he had 20 attacks, he actually rolled really low. But nine wounds on top of the seven he was already carrying. 16 wounds, there is no one inspiring around him. The giant dies. It really, really sucks, but the giant dies. He's routed, and again, very, very well played by my opponent. Impressively so. He changed facings like so because uh, my chariot can't see him to charge. And that's it. I mean, bravo. This game is far from finished. Here's bottom of three after moving. And like I said, my chariots are going to charge into his calf because I'm going to try to kill these damn elves, even if it does cost me to sacrifice some chariots that I'm not super, you know, fond of anyway. Uh, my unit of siege breakers charge into the uh, dragon because screw it, might as well. My unit of warriors back up a little bit in the forest and the unit of warriors behind them just kind of stay right behind them. I want his dragons to come at me. I want to split them up some, but I don't want them to have an easy 
easy charge, and if he does charge into my warriors, I want him to be hindered when they hit the forest. We'll see what happens. I think the green one might have Pathfinder. I don't remember which one has Pathfinder or which one doesn't. I, I just, whatever. They may, they may not sue me. Uh, in the center there, though, since he balked with his dragons, my red goblins and my bigot make it into his bolt thrower, and I'm really, really hoping that's enough damage to take that stupid thing out, you know, at least, at least, you know, in honor of the giant who took three friggin' shots with a damn thing. <laughs> Uh, I finally remember my army standard on the right flank and move him forward, just in the nick of time to do nothing. My warlock more or less stays where he's at. He's going to pelt the black dragon if he can. And then my other unit siege breakers move into the forest to counter charge whatever uh, they can in the next turn. That is it for my movement. In the padsy phase, my warlock fires the lightning bolt at the black dragon, doing two solid wounds to it. I'll take it. And then we dive headfirst into glorious combat. Uh, my Red Goblin Bigot and my scouts attack the Bolt Thrower, beating it literally to death. 6, 12, 13 wounds done to this piece of garbage. And not only do I not like War Machines because they're super, super good, and I totally understand why people take them. I don't think they're broke or anything like that. Uh, but they're armed by elves, and all elves must die. Which these do, which is awesome. So it's dead. I reface my uh, Red Goblin Scouts just because I know the dragons are coming. And the bigot can't really move anywhere. There's no reason to even put him forward. So he just kind of stays right there. That's it for this combat. But I'm glad it worked and I'm glad that the bolt throw is dead. That was really cool. Combat over here, I am uh, wavered a little bit thanks to going through the forest. So out of the 16, 18 attacks, 12 attacks, they hit and wound with 6, which is incredible considering they were hindered. I'll take it. I ain't going to complain any. Uh, I would have preferred to do around 8 to 10, but, you know, when you only have 12 attacks, that's kind of wishful thinking. Luckily, the dice gods smile down on me. I could not believe it. I rolled a 10, and then I rolled an 11. They're gone. They're gone. The chariot regiment, butt naked and hindered, routed them. Couldn't have been prouder of my chariots. Are they dead next turn? I don't know. Maybe. But I couldn't be happier with them. They did absolutely extraordinary, and I'm thrilled. Combat with my siege breakers and his dragon. Ten wounds, baby. Ten wounds. Do not underestimate siege breakers. They are a beautiful, beautiful unit. Ten wounds to this elf riding piece of garbage. And uh, I don't care if he routes. I know he's bleeding, and that does my heart good. Again, I roll like a friggin' champion, and he routes! <laughs> Nobody was more surprised than I was! But yeah, he actually routed, and I'm so stunned, I leave the unit right there, because I wasn't expecting that. At all. But I'll take it. We go over yeah, we go over to top of four after movement, and honestly, he did some things I wasn't expecting. Uh, one of his units of Cav charge into my chariots, which I totally expected, but then he sends his mage into the flank, which smart move. I didn't see that coming. Uh, his black dragon charges my bigot, the green dragon charges my uh, red goblin scouts. Wasn't expecting the black dragon to go in, but it is what it is, and that's really it for his movement. Nothing happens in his pansy phase, so we go straight into combat, and the first thing that happens is the Black Dragon has him a Red Goblin Bigot Buffet, doing five solid wounds to him, which uh, is actually a lot less than I expected. <laughs> Fortune smiles down on the goblins yet again, and the Bigot ends up just becoming wavered, not routed, which means he has to waste his dragon's time for another turn munching on this guy. You guys are right, the Bigots are really good. In this combat, his mage and his uh, cav were able to put seven wounds on my chariots. They don't have the best nerve check in the world, so that actually made me nervous, but they did amazing. They took out a unit of cav on the charge, being hindered. If they route here, they route here. It's totally understandable. They actually don't, which shocks the hell out of me. Uh, I don't have a picture of it because I was shocked, but yeah, he backs up an inch, and I have a really good chance now. For the final combat of the turn, his green dragon uh, attacks my scouts, doing eight wounds. <laughs> yeah, if he doesn't roll snakes, they're gone. He does not roll snake eyes, and the red goblins go down into the dragon's stomach, where I hope he gets horrible, horrible indigestion and lifelong heartburn. 
Uh, they are gone off the table, and then he changes his facing to look exactly that direction. The scouts did good, though. They helped out getting a hold of both of them. In fact, if it wasn't for the scouts, they only would have gotten, like, a wound or two on him from my Red Goblin Bigot, because I rolled really poorly for him. So, uh, I think it was a good use. Plus, they redirected both dragons. That was awesome. That takes us over here to bottom of four after movement. And... Eh, not a whole lot, really. Uh, my, what's it called? Siege Breakers were out of range. Uh, even with movement six, they couldn't get a hold of the chariot, or I'm sorry, of the cav. So my chariots charge, counter charge into the cav, which hopefully goes as well as it did the first time. They won't be hindered because, well, it's a counter charge. My Siege Breakers in the middle go into the center to dare the dragon to charge him. I have my warlock behind him. He can still lightning bolt the dragon, but, you know, it'll be at a slight hindrance. Uh, my Siege Breakers on the right side there go into the forest a little bit to counter charge the chariots if or i'm sorry the cavalry if they're still there next turn shooters stay still because they're going to try to shoot his character and uh my warriors in the forest there they come forward uh six inches daring the green dragon to charge them as well either way it goes it should work out and i should be able to kill off one more dragon if he's if he does comes toward the center that would be nice uh that is it for well i'm sorry the army standard i march him 12 inches towards the wounded unit of warriors because he's got the healing charm Next turn, I should be able to do something about their wounds, hopefully, and that is actually it uh, for my movement. In the pansy phase, my shooters take a pot shot at his character, who's got cover and is an individual, so it's nine shots needing sixes, and I'm able to wound him twice. It's not enough to even waver the little bastard, but at least he's bleeding. I see you. I see you, you knife-eared bastard. We dive into combat, and my chariots flop terribly. Three wounds. Three wounds out of 12 attacks. Just wasn't meant to be. Couldn't do enough to hurt them. Uh, yeah. Yeah, just the dice finally cooled off, and, uh, honestly, I can't complain. I've been rolling really well this game. This just kind of kicked you in the stomach, you know what I mean? Needless to say, I don't even so much as waver this unit, and I back off an inch. That is probably going to cost me that unit next turn. But, in all fairness, they should probably have been gone last turn. Who am I to complain? That takes us to top of five, and uh, his dragons don't come anywhere near me. Uh, the green dragon was able to see the flank of the chariots and makes it in no problem, and that spells the end for them, because his cavalry go in as well. It is what it is. Uh, his black dragon does... I, I can't remember if it charges the bigot or not, because it does have a breath attack. I think it charges the bigot. doesn't really matter. Uh, and that's really it for his movement. I think he heals the wounds on his cavalry in his pansy phase, but anyway, not really important. Here's combat, and yes, the black dragon eats the red goblin bigot, and you know what? That's perfectly fine. The bigot was a real champion in this one. This combat, though, 18 wounds are done to my poor chariots. On top of the seven they were already sitting on is 25 wounds. He does not roll snake eyes. They rout, and the dragon stays where he's at for the most part, but the cavalry turned to face the siege breakers, which was smart. Poor chariots. Maybe if they had done more than three wounds, but that dragon in their flank, they were there. It was it was the writing on the wall, right? Here's bottom of five after movement, and I start coming forward. Uh, I gotta get a hold of these dragons if I can. I'd love to get a hold of his caster if I can, but I, I'm way out of position. I, I was playing too conservative, too defensive. I should have moved forward. My mistake. It'll happen again. So the siege breakers move over the wall. The warriors move up, up basically up against the obstacle. The other unit of warriors move up with them. The uh, army standard comes up to try to heal the unit of warriors just in case the dragon charges them instead of unit of warriors in front of them. And uh, on the right side there, my siege breakers charge into the cav. Hopefully, even though they'll be hindered, it'll be enough to take them out. My Warlock and my Shooters aim at his caster, and hopefully are going to be able to take him out this turn, and that is it for movement. Opening up the Pansy phase, the Shooters aim at the caster, his little mage back there, and do two wounds to him. Not bad, considering he had cover and uh, individual, so I'll take it. Two wounds is better than zero. And then my mostly useless army standard guy with the healing charm heals one wound off the Warriors. I guess it's better than none. The nerve check for his mage sees him rout with the reroll. I was stupid happy about that. Die, you knife-eared bastard. 
We jump into combat, and my siege breakers are able to only do six wounds. Being hindered really hurt me here. You would think threes or fours wouldn't be that big of a deal. It is. But six wounds is double what my chariots did. And, uh, <sighs> let's see if it's enough. It isn't. However, they don't rout, but they are wavered. And that is better than nothing. I back off an inch, and, well, you can see what's coming next turn. That brings us to the top of six after movement, and again, something I didn't see. His black dragon and his green dragon are able to see and charge the front of my siege breakers. That hurt. That hurt a lot. If you look at the bottom right of the screen, one of my shooters faints, which I totally understand. Uh, his cav, they just back up a little bit so both dragons can make it in. Since they're wavered, that's totally allowed. And that's it for his movement. We go straight into combat, and the combined might of two dragons does 14 wounds to my Siege Breakers. Even with defense 6 in the front, that was brutal. 14 wounds. Again, I just don't see it. I don't see it, but again, great eye by my opponent. That was a beautiful charge. And it's enough to rout them. It's a shame, but it is what it is. And uh, yeah, lost my Siege Breakers because my opponent outmaneuvered me. Very well done. We go into the bottom of six, but there's really no reason I don't do anything. I miss with my lightning bolt. Uh, as you can see, there's not a ton of movement, so that's it. That's the end of the game right here. Uh, we roll to see if it goes into turn seven. I think he rolled a one, and so yeah, the game ends with two dragons and a unit of cav cowering behind him compared to all those delicious ogres. But don't let it get you too, too twisted. Those dragons are probably carrying over 700 points total, and whatever the cav is worth, probably close to 300. So we might have 1,000 points on the table still. Uh, this was a solid game where I played way too defensively, which I mostly blame myself. And... Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll get to the recap because this game is over. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. In the end, as surprised as I was, this was a victory for Lord Tremendous. I couldn't believe it. Uh, I got 1,350 out of him. He got 1080 out of me for a difference of 270. Just barely not a draw. Uh, I ended up losing my giant, both bigots on flea bags, both chariot units, one unit of siege breakers, and my red goblin scouts. Not terrible. Most of my ogres survived this one, and uh, yeah, if I played a little bit more aggressively, I might have been able to score another dragon, but uh, I'll take it. A W is a W, and I'm not proud. So I really, really like bigots on flea bags. Thank you guys for pointing those guys out to me and, and telling me to try them out because they're a lot of fun. They're really, really fast and they irritate people. <laughs> Make them divert dragons. I like that. Unfortunately, due to poor placement on my part and my eagle-eyed opponent, my giant got robbed. <laughs> I was so looking forward to using him too. Oh, the Retribution Crystal is almost as fun as the Blasters. It makes me want to put Blasters back in the army, but I'm also afraid to put Blasters in the army. So the Retribution Crystal on Chariots is, uh, is a good compromise. I really was happy about that. I wish my shooters had done more this game. They did help me take out a mage, uh, which was great. But I don't know. I'm greedy, I guess. And I really wish they would have done six to eight wounds like I'm accustomed to. This game was not a great showing for them, but they weren't useless. So I guess there's that. Not a huge fan of the Warlock. Ah, just I'm, I'm trying really hard because I do like having magic, but I'm thinking a captain with a heavy crossbow hanging out by the shooters would just be a better possibly even cheaper choice. I'm just not seeing the magic draw, which is uh, unfortunate. My warlock kind of sucks. Didn't get to try out Mind Fog. Maybe I'd have felt better about it if I had. Maybe there's a different spell route I could go with them. Or maybe magic just isn't going to be for me. I don't know. I might go back to Alchemist Curse just to try it out. But I'm also toying with just getting rid of it altogether. Uh, it was rolling real high today. That helped me a lot. It really did. And uh, it helped me achieve my first solid victory that I feel that I earned. Uh, especially against elves. So I'll take that. Makes me feel pretty good. And I might actually be learning. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? 
This is a great game against a really great opponent. I mean, I, I love playing against this guy. I really do. Who doesn't like playing against Big Daddy? But yeah, lots of fun. And I love it because we give each other so much crap. We actually make people around us uncomfortable. Yeah. And, you know, he brings me elves to slaughter, which uh, I always appreciate. They're my favorite sacrifice. Definitely looking forward to a rematch. But yeah, that's gonna do it, guys and gals. Battle Report number 12 is officially in the history books. Uh, the next games that I'll be playing this Saturday are part of another three-round, uh, one-day local game store tournament, so I'm hoping for a good turnout there. I'll play a slightly doctored list from this one, because again, I'm, I don't know what I want to do with the, uh, what's it called, with the Warlock. We'll see, but I might end up just removing them from the list. Uh, but yeah. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or complaints, feel free to put them in the comment section below, and I will get back to you as quick as I can. But as always, thanks.